going on? Gozi here and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be putting out a little bit of motorcycle content. I am doing some routine maintenance on my 2013 Yamaha R1. I know I don't really talk about the bike much and I'm trying to get better at it. Some of you know I ride. Uh, for those of you who don't, yes, I do ride. Uh, I've been riding for the past, I want to say, seven or eight years now. Uh, this is my second bike, first bike being the uh, Gixxer 600. Uh, upgraded to a Yamaha R1 and we've had this for uh, going on three years. I bought the bike in San Diego, uh, did the chin and sprocket on it and that was three years ago and I barely ride the bike so the chain, the sprocket uh, set kind of lasted me a while but I think it's time we uh, swapped that out and uh, went with something fresh. 2013 Yamaha R1, we went ahead and we did the uh, carbon fiber uh, side ferns, uh, bottom ferns as well and the uh, tank cover. Uh, I would have liked to do the tail fairing carbon fiber as well, but I wanted to leave some uh, gray accents on there, so I left the tail wing along with the front cow. I don't know, maybe uh, someday we might uh, swap that out, but I'm going to keep rocking it for now. I think she looks, she looks awesome that way. Let me know what you guys think. Alright, here's the chain and sprocket currently on the bike. The chain doesn't look too bad, but the teeth on the sprocket is definitely worn down. So I'm going to be going ahead and swapping those out. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is uh, dropping the rear wheel and then working my way up forward. You're going to uh, be uh, unbolting the shifter linkage, taking that front cover off and then that will give us access to that front sprocket. For the rear wheel, you have a shaft that goes through the wheel and is retained by a nut. You just go ahead and undo the nut and pull the shaft through, like so. Move the wheel a little closer towards the bike. Release that tension on the chain and you are good to then drop the rear wheel out. So, we're going to work our way up forward, we're going to undo the uh, shifter linkage and then get that uh, front cover off to gain access to the front sprockets. And for the 2013, you'll be utilizing an 8mm wrench to get this bolt off that secures the uh, linkage to the rest of the assembly. Next, you'll be using an Allen key to get the bolts off that retain the front cover or if you have these uh, socket style, it's going to be an H316. And we're going to be taking off the front cover. Like so. And that gives us access to that front sprocket. 30 millimeter socket. Perfect fit for this nut here. And I'm going to hold down the chain so it doesn't move too much. Going to be using our handy impact wrench. I know it's not advised to uh, use the impact gun with chrome material sockets, but we're going to just full send it. Alright, we have our nut off, and then we have the washer as well. Alright, now that we have the nut off, uh, you can then go ahead and take off your chain. It would probably have been easier if we had did it with the biking gear and with the uh, chain still wrapped around the rear wheel, but either way it works. Uh, to each for the rivet style master link, the uh, easiest thing for me has always been to just put a grinder to that, uh, grind both of the surface, pop that out, and then pop the uh, other end of the uh, master link out the back end, and uh, keep it moving. Alright, took a grinder to it, centered it down, and I'm going to use my handy dandy flathead to go ahead and pop that link off. Alright, like so. You can go ahead and undo the rest of the chain from that master link. Just like that. Now you're good to pull the rest of the chain out. I'm going to spray it down just a bit to loosen things up. And it just shimmies, just shimmies right out. Full sprocket has been taken off. Next I'm going to take off the chain guide because it tends to get a little gunky. 
So I'm gonna spray that down with some brake cleaner. All right, and here's your chain guide. And you can just see how gunky, how gunky it gets from the uh, chain grease. So I'm gonna spray that down. Cleaned up the chain guide. It looks a lot better than it did before, but could be better. Not the end of the world though. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in and I'll bolt up the new sprocket. Here's our sprocket and gold chain kit ordered from Vortex. This is the uh, V3 2.0 and aluminum rear sprocket and this feels like a steel, steel front sprocket. We're going to go ahead and feed our chain through first. cycle it through. Tighten that up once I get that rear wheel back on and the uh, master link on the chain that'll help us secure things while we uh, put some torque on that. Alright and the rear sprocket is secured to the rear wheel assembly via six spots by nuts they're 14 millimeters, so we're going to be unbolting those and swapping it for the new sprockets. And the sprockets are the same diameter, so we're not going to be affecting our gearing. We got the new sprocket on there, and now we're gonna throw the wheel assembly back on the bike. All right, so we got the rear wheel on there. We're gonna feed the chain through. And it's pretty much the same style as our old setup. It's the riveting style, so I'm gonna go ahead and compress that. And then I'll use the tool to then expand the surface of the studs so the chain doesn't come out on its own. We'll hit for that to happen while riding. Do I have my uh, special ribbon tube ordered from Amazon? So this is gonna help the process of spreading those studs past the link. That way uh, the chain uh, master link doesn't undo. That's what I paid for. It can be more than like say uh, 40, 50 bucks or so. And there you have it. So now we're going to uh, put some tension on the chain, hold down that back wheel while we go ahead and uh, torque the uh, nut for the front sprocket. We're going to try to stop boat and I can see why the prior owner left it without it because it's 
almost feel like it's cross threaded. I mean, it's going in, but yeah. Tight is tight, right? No, I'm just joking, but we're here now. That'll do. That'll hold. All right, gonna put the linkage. Shift the linkage back on. I already forgot what position I had it in, so now I got a, a test fit. All right, I like it right there. Because you can pretty much use the teeth on the assembly to adjust the level height. Tighten that down. All right, we're gonna tighten up that rear wheel. And that'll be the last thing we do. You also want to check the tension on the chain as you're tightening that rear wheel. Because it will add some tension in that chain. So you almost have to compensate for it. Make sure the chain isn't too tight when you're done. So when you're done, you want to see some tension on that. Not too tight. And you're, you're good to go. I'm gonna roll the bike out now. Give it a good wash and take it for a ride. Thank you for watching the video. Hopefully it was helpful. This is a Yamaha R1, but the same principle applies to uh, most uh, chain driven bikes. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you watch the videos and were curious about the cars in the garage, I have a ton of videos on the channel uh, covering both cars. The yellow one, we recently just did an 85 conversion on that. I'll be dropping a video soon on what that process was like. Appreciate y'all. I'm going to be doing a cold start on the bike uh, to wrap things up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll be seeing y'all on the next video.